Okay, so from Okay, so it appears that to for the sound to um, be picked up, I need to uh, broadcast, which means we've automatically started um, the webinar. Okay. Do you have any updates on Mrs. Ajoke? Yeah, I, I called her just one minute ago and she said she's trying to join in. I would have to call her again. Um, okay. Let me just... Mm, Sonia, quick question. Yes, please. So with this video playing now, how yeah. at what point are you going to play it? Because what are we going to uh, demo it? Almost what is on the on the video? On this, oh, okay. So I'll probably just stop it then. I just wanted to fill in the stop sharing. I just wanted to fill in the silence with something uh, as it is. Yeah, you can do that. Sharing. You can do that. You can do that. Okay, we've officially started. We have two uh, people on the call. Hi, Florence. Hello, Solomon. We'll officially kickstart at 12.05. Thank you again, everyone, for being here with us. Thank you for choosing to spend the next one hour uh, with us as well. We will be kickstarting very, very shortly. With us here is Mr. Patrick from Kumati Academy. Also have Juliet, I have Ifai, and it promises to be an educative and impactful session. Hi, Mr. Solomon. At exactly 12.10, we would start, but in the meantime, um, kindly allow me to you know, share a couple of videos on some of the products that we have to fill in the time. Uh, we can get to you know, use the, uh, the chats to talk to each other as much as possible, and we'll move from there. It is officially 12.05 and we will officially begin and hopefully um, other participants will join us as we go along. Uh, with us today, <clears throat> we have two speakers lined up, Mrs. Ajoke <clears throat> of Ditmo Academy and Mr. Patrick of Kumati Academy. Mr. Patrick is here with us already and to be championing the conversation today, is Juliet from FlexiServe and also Ifai uh, from FlexiServe as well. I am your host, but you're not be seeing much of me as um, Juliet and Ifai will be championing the conversation for today. It appears Mr. Patrick has an issue with his network and he's had to drop off. 
Okay, um, network is not doing us any favors today, it appears. Can you confirm that you can hear me? Hi, Sonia. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Um, let me, Mr. Patrick is back. Patrick is back. Recording in progress. Okay. Okay, um, I'll quickly do the official introductions and we would move from there. Good afternoon, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to SAFSIM's user engagement webinar. Here we would be having a conversation around the issues of fees collection and just generally optimizing um, the process. To champion this conversation today with us is Ifai, Juliet, and Mr. Patrick. We are expecting one more um, speaker, but she's currently having issues with her network and will join us as soon as she can. I am Sonia. I am your host. It promises to be an interesting session. It promises to be educative. It promises that um, you'd learn a thing or two and also be able to share some of your concerns around fees collection, your challenges, and probably most especially, you know, learn a thing or two about how to go about uh, making the process efficient. I will be handing over now to Ifai, who would um, be chairing the conversations with um, Mr. Patrick of Kumati Academy, after which we would also have Juliet, who would have a question and answer session and then we can generally just uh, give our input and our feedback as much as possible. We can use the comments um, section to um, share any questions that we have or any updates, and then we would move from there. Hi, Ifai, how are you this afternoon? I'm very well. Hi, Sonia. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. All right, over to you, Ifai. All right, thank you so much for the beautiful introduction. So, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ifa Inwoki. I'm the Customer Success Manager here at Fletcher And uh, with me on the call, we have uh, our special guest, Mr. Patrick from Kumati, uh, Kumati Academy. And uh, we have Juliet, also you know, one of our product uh, support experts uh, here at Fletcher So before we quickly delve into the uh, discussion for today, um, uh, today's webinar session is focusing on you know, um, boosting efficiency and you know, maximizing revenue. How you know, as as the as the title implies, um, how to maximize and navigate fees collection. So I think it's no coincidence that you know in this unprecedented time and you know the challenges and the new governments you know that just taken over, uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, increase in uh, cost of production. Um, you know the ability for businesses and schools to pay for, pay staff to pay their staff salaries and you know to keep the business afloat. Um, one thing is certain, you know, being able to. Uh, maximize the process of fee, fee collection and not, you know, losing on, you know, your students in school is very crucial for our educators. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why, you know, we are talking about, you know, how schools can, you know, uh, maximize that process and make sure that they can uh, generate more revenue. So on the call, I would allow uh, Mr. Patrick to quickly, uh, briefly introduce yourself and uh, we can get started with the conversation. Hi, Mr. Patrick. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So, you can quickly, yeah, go ahead. Right, I'm Mr. Patrick from Kumati Academy, the IT personnel in Kumati Academy, actually. Kumati Academy is located in Yola, that's at Damawa State, actually. So, thank you. All right, thanks for that introduction, Mr. Patrick. Uh, we still have our, our second guest who is currently struggling to get, get online, and we are hopeful that you'll be joining us in a few minutes. So thank you for the introduction, Mr. Patrick. So uh, to quickly get the conversation started, um, so let's quickly start off. 
like let's talk about your school, uh, Kumati Academy. Can you tell us how long, you know, the school has been in existence? Like, how long have you guys been operating? Started in uh, twenty thirteen. That's twenty thirteen. Uh, yes. That's so you know that. we started with uh, daycare. That's like ten years from now, or oh, ten years, like ten mm -hmm. years now. So we started with uh, daycare, small, and then the school started growing, added from class to class, and then we have a full blown school now, which we have from nursery daycare. We still have daycare. Then we have nursery one, nursery two, three, then primary. We call it basic actually, basic two to basic six actually. Great. So I'm curious, you know, you mentioned that, you know, the school started in the year 2013. So I, I want to believe that, you know, there have been a lot of, you know, growth trajectory in your administrative process, like, you know, way back 2013, how you uh, most likely used to collect fees and, you know, and up to what you currently do now. So I'm curious to know, maybe you can shed more light on what, you know, how things all started and how you moved up to what things currently look like today. Like what has been the process, what, have, what has been the challenges pertaining particularly in the area of fees collection and how has that experience also affected uh you know our parents can you shed more light on that yeah <laughs> on that note i think the growth of the school has been enormous actually you no know, things happening school growing and then becoming a standard school in the entire area it has been challenging actually especially in the fees aspect you know uh, before we have a manual computation of fees where parents come to the school with cash payment or they go to the bank and then make deposit of payment some make transfers some use ussd to make transfers and then the records were all on books like manual records you have the right names and then parents keep coming getting receipts coming up and down and then most times they will get the receipt at the end the receipt may not tally with the amount so there were a lot of inconsistency in the account actually a lot of inconsistency i can't even start mentioning the one that the receipt may not even be found or you go to the bank and they make transfer and then at the end we cannot point out which child actually made this transfer which parents made this transfer so there are a lot of problems growing up but at the time went on we kept growing we kept advancing in knowledge and we kept trying to be better we even at some point i think last last year i think we employed the use of uh, excel to see if we can manage and then compute better so even with that excel you know excel gives you fit in and then fit out it gives you what you give it so even with that it was still we still had diff difficulties actually plenty of difficulties and the Thank difficulties you. were mostly on those sides. So I think. Well, yeah, you've been able to do justice to uh, giving us more insights on how things used to be. So, um, given that experience that you you just shared, right? At what point did you realize that you know something had to be done in terms of being able to maximize the not just the process of collecting um, collecting fees, but the experience that you know. Uh, parents, you know, the parents are facing with your school at that time? Okay. I think the school management had to, the proprietors had to sit down and think over it again. They thought over it again. I think last year, somebody introduced SAFSIM to us. And then many of that persons have been coming, actually. Many of the website uh, developers, they have been coming. So before I was, or before I came into, um, or before I came on board, actually, many other developers came around. So they didn't have the manpower to manage it, actually. The skills required. So they will, they send those one off. So when I came on board, somebody introduced something. I was called on my own opinion on the idea. And I, I thought, okay. SAFSIM, what are the models that SAFSIM bring to us? So they now told me school fees and then record management and all that. I said, okay, that would be a very good thing. It will help us track our record very well, job or keep good records and fees and result also will be dealt with efficiently. So I think by last year, that's when we started. 
Okay, so I, I like the fact that you mentioned that you know you had other offers coming in to to help solve the problem that you you know you the school was experiencing at that time. But something I'm you know also curious to know. I know the as an IT expert that you are, uh, the process of selecting a suitable software that would solve your school's issue comes a lot of you know back and forth conversations, like looking at the the advantages and disadvantages. So I'm really curious to know, like you know, having you know reviewed several softwares in the market, like what stood out for you in terms of substance when you were when you were evaluating the process and what that, what has the experience been like so far. I do a lot of research actually. I I try to find out what I'm going into, who are these people, how long have they stayed in the business, who are they working with, who are they partnering with, are they reliable, what is their the host like, where are they holding their this thing from, the server, where is it hosted from, like things like that. Is there something that will crash in the next two days or five days? So when I checked the other uh, the other um, how do I put it now? The other customer, the other person that came on board, the other product. I noticed that most schools don't actually use them. They are not well known. I could even find one or two schools that are that use that particular uh, product. Oh, so yeah. when I checked on SAFSIM, I found out that a lot actually. Even Abuja, even here in Yola, some other schools are using it. So I said, okay, if these schools are using it so i think it's also a very good one all right thanks for sharing that uh, that makes sense at least you know you did your background uh or your due diligence i would say to make sure that you know we are the right fit systems would be able to fit in the needs of your school like you know looking at comparing you know number of schools that are currently using that particular product and looking at you know their support and how the experience has been you know with other schools but something i find very interesting that happened at least as the customer success manager we get we have a lot of interactions with uh, both prospects and our, our current customers. And uh, something I find very interesting is that you know um, in in selecting the right the right software to you know to to subscribe to. Sometimes as an ICT professional, you know it's always very difficult to convince you know stakeholders you know in terms of uh, you know going you know going with your choice or going with your own prepared solution. So I don't know if did you face any kind of you know. Uh, challenges and how were you able to navigate that experience? So others, others, you know, in the space can also learn from how you were able to talk about the uh, the uh, the benefit of utilizing our solution and how that you know sits well with with the school. Did you face any pushback or or, or anything like that? <laughs> A lot of pushback actually. You know, taking. Uh... Uh, your money and putting it online and going cashless that's <laughs> that's terrible you need to do a lot of talking you need to convince people and the former accountant that was here before the person that was here trying to he was manual actually he did manual work he loves paper and pen so trying to uh, take his job kind of not taking his job i don't know how to put it but moving his job online was not difficult they saw me at the black sheep <laughs> but i knew that it was for the best actually i just knew that things were not going right if things are not going right you cannot just sit down and allow things to just slide so i knew things were not going right and then if things are supposed to be set properly we need a good background we need something that can help us a good channel that can help us and something gave us that opportunity to do that yeah that makes sense uh, so let's take a little uh, step back um let's talk about you know um in your earlier conversation you talked about um the process of reconciliation where you know students based on different payment plans parents would make payment for maybe part payment and then you know at some point they have to come back to reconcile payment and sometimes a receipt will get lost and you know all of those processes can be very very daunting so i'm i'm very curious to know how as an ICT professional you know so as someone who is in charge of you know you know verifying payment you know reconciling payment how were you able to you know to balance the the emotional aspect of that experience, especially with with parents, right? How do you how were you able to like make sure that you know, uh, you know, with the the manual process you had in place, how are you able to like balance that that process and also make sure that you know the emotions of our, of your customers, you know, is also you know on a positive note. It's also left on a positive note. Hmm. I think that 
that matter we are still on it actually <laughs> we are still battling uh, with parents try to convince them most times you pay the school fee they pay the school fee, and then they'll still come back and ask for receipt and you tell them ah your receipt is online don't worry when you have made the payment forget about it the receipt has been sent to us also and sometimes they'll make payments they will be scared of putting their details on those uh, their card details on it so balancing those two like trying to convince the parents and then getting the receipt and balancing the account it has not been that very that not be easy actually but we are pushing we are still trying our best to convince more parents more parents actually like last time we didn't have large number going into it but this time most of them sat at home and then paid their fees they didn't even come to most of them i've never seen them this time but I, i've seen their money actually and it has been good reconciling the account actually it's better reconciling the account great so how would you compare that experience uh, you know with the you know the offline uh process when you were going the manual route to you know those excel calculation and trying to make sense of you know old receipts and so how would you compare that that experience you know on the manual side and then on the you know um automated uh, uh side of things how 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 would you how you describe or you know uh, put the picture as to what that experience looked like when you when when comparing both. Okay, I think it's it's better. Automation is better actually. It's way I if I want to read over ten, I will say it's like eight, or let's say if I want to put it on a ratio, I will say eight is to eight is to three, because wow. the manual computation. When I came in first, the other the man had to bring me in because of my skill on Excel to try to even with the Excel I try to still channel it and try to follow the money because when you want to follow money it's very difficult to trace out what's happening and what's not happening. So even with the skill of Excel I still found difficulty. But now I can just download the Excel sheet online, PM, and then calculate it within five minutes. I'm not knowing how much I have and how much is coming in and how much is going out. And that is very, very easy actually. Hi, Mr. Patrick, I think we lost you. Okay, I think let me just, let me recap. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, sure. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Okay. Mr. Patrick. I said it's actually very easy. Very, 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 very easy for me. Like I said, I'll read in a ratio of eight is to three. Automation is very, very easy. Even with the skill of Excel that time, we still had issues in trying to compute, even with the skill of Excel that time. But now, by just looking at my phone, I know how much I'm expecting and how much we have gotten and how much we are still expecting as outstanding. And then when I download the Excel sheet from the SAF sim, I just calculate it and then everything just comes out easily. So I think it's very, very easy. Automation is actually very easy. Yeah, that 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 makes sense. I think that that I can you know I can I can understand because also as a customer success you know uh, a professional you know we also have to keep up with subscription payments of our customers. Like as you pay your subscription fees, we need to be able to like you know not just leverage um, Excel or Google Sheet. We need to also be able to leverage automation to make sure that our you know our payment reconciliation process is uh, very smooth and. You know that's that that really makes sense. So let's let's talk more about the automation aspect of things. Um, so I I really like to delve delve in more on the you know the uh, payment plans. Like how at how do you currently like how do you currently implement payment plans on on SAF sims? Like what and what has been the experience so far? The payment plan, it's easy, but sometimes it gets challenging when network can be can be disturbing like most times you make a payment and then the net, the money has left the person account and the money has not dropped on this other side and then the receipts has not been sent all those kind of challenges and then you get to battle it out you get to tell the parent oh yeah trust me just calm down your money is safe we will rectify the problem with you we'll, I'll see how I can rectify. Sometimes they don't feel that I'm a staff of staff <laughs> That's actually very funny. But they sometimes they feel I am a staff actually. Like this is your team, this is your company. Uh -huh. <laughs> because I'll tell them, don't worry, I'll rectify it for you. Don't worry, I'll just fix it. Don't worry, I'll fix it. So most times it's challenging, but whenever I call Juliet or call somebody, it's actually very easy. 
we just sort it out and then one or two minutes. So in essence, you're saying that the support experience, you know, when you have issues, you know, trying to um, try to engage with parents, particularly in the area of, you know, uh, implementing a payment plan, uh, the support team are always, you know, readily available to support you. So, but I'm really curious on the parent side because I know that uh, as as a business, we our focus is to ensure that, you know, we can give our customers that positive experience, and the positive experience includes not just the engagement side of things, like you mentioned, rightly mentioned, you know, giving that good support. Anytime you have, you know, payment, maybe you make part payment for your subscription fee, we're able to easily reconcile, share invoices, and, you know, that process is quite smooth. So on the parent side for your for your school, I'm really particular about how that experience has been from parents. Have you gotten any good positive feedback as to as to your uh, as to the process in terms of uh, the time when you implemented the automate, automated approach in terms of your uh, payment plans? Have you gotten good feedback from parents, and what are they really saying about about this new experience? Yeah. On the parents, like both our parents actually are analog people, most of them. Yeah. Most of them don't have Android phones. So pushing them to get email address, pushing them to get Android phone, it's most it was challenging actually. But when they now did it, and then I remember I can remember vividly when I did it for one parent, the man said, Ah, is it this easy? Like, can I just sit at home and pay? I say, yeah, you can just sit at home and pay. Just click here, click here, and then you pay. Then the man said, oh, it's better. And then another parent, when I went to the house, because most times when they have challenges, to help the customer relationship, I go to their houses to solve the problem for them. Because most of, most of the time, when you say, let them come here, they feel you're wasting their time. And then, so I go to their houses and then sort out the problem for them. So when I, on this parent, uh, one time with this parent, she paid the school fees and then she wanted to view the result. And then she saw the results online. And she said, ah, your result is online. Is it this, just, uh, just click here and click your result is online. So most of them are actually responding very well. The other one was like the ones that are computer literate. They are actually overwhelmed. Yeah. They said, wow, this is the first time somebody is using this in Yola. Like this fees aspect, the first time someone using it in Yola, they're actually overwhelmed. But most of them are still trying to catch up, actually. But I think with time, they will actually. Yeah, that that makes sense. I know there are sometime, some sometime ago last year I visited Yola and I was opportunity to visit some schools, and I can really relate to the issue you mentioned around you know um, challenges with adoption, digital adoption. Um, something I can uh, just to add my two cents in terms of being able to drive that impact, you know, particularly in your location. So maybe you know something that some of some of the schools in Lagos, some of our clients in Lagos and in Abuja, what they normally do, they usually have during their PTA, you know, meetings, they usually have a time where they engage parents and then show them like an end-to-end -end process of how you know payment is being reconciled on SAF sims, you know, how they can view their invoices, uh, how they can view their receipts, how they can make payments how they can view their child words, you know, just have a small sort of session just to show uh, the parents on how to, you know, how to view, view all of that. And that has, you know, significantly improved the experience and the adoption, you know, from the parents' side. Maybe something that you can also consider for your school. At least, you know, adoption is not something that would happen just like a bank theory. It takes time. It takes, I can remember when we always, you know, everyone we would usually go to the bank to go make withdrawals. But now these days you find people going to POS terminals, try to use POS. Everyone is getting used to the digital, uh, the digital approach to do things. So it's going to take time, but at least you know one step at a time. You can you can you can as well start from you know trying to engage parents and make sure you know um, they they are able to understand you know how best to use the solution. So that makes sense. So let's talk about. Um, now, on, I know what we talked about right now was on the parent side. Let's talk about the, the school side. We have, you know, money is involved. Um, like you mentioned earlier that um, during the manual process uh, 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 timeline, you usually have to go back and forth, you know, uh, collect fees, you know. I know sometimes you might have to send students back home and all those things. I don't know. So in terms of fees collection, I wanted to find out, like, when at times when you maybe when it, it, a student hasn't paid payment, you can't even send reminders. It's, it's very difficult to communicate with parents. Like you sending your the kids back home, has that in any way helped to you know help you generate more revenue for your school? I was I, I'm very curious to understand 
or to know to, to get more information about the impact of that approach? Like, has it been very effective for your school? The, the impact of sending children back home? Yes, as at the time you were using the mono approach. Okay, most times we we don't send children back home. We just take them out. They don't attend classes. They don't write exams. They just sit out. Because if you send a child back home in this this town and then the child gets missing, you are in for it actually. So yeah. we keep them in school. They don't go home, but they don't write exams. They don't enter the class. Now, before Sapsin came, from the records I found out, most times at the end of the term, we have an outstanding of 300 plus, sometimes 500 outstanding. 500 plus, 300 plus, it goes up 800. But yes. last term, last term was shocking. I think the only outstanding I had was uh, about 200, about 200 or something. That's the outstanding I had. Because of the provision of, uh, I get to send them emails. I be stop them very well with email WhatsApp. I'll be sending them emails. Most parents don't like that. When they see, they don't like it. So they will come out and then they will now say, ah, this is your this thing. You have sent me email. You have sent me email again. I say, that door. Just come and pay the fees. So most times they don't like it. So the email, the email approach has actually helped a lot to increase revenue also. Yeah. So in essence, what you're saying is that, you know, the automation that you've been able to implement, you know, by using SAPSIMS has helped, you know, in terms of, you know, being able to collect uh, a maxim maximize fee collection process for your school and also to uh, directly impact the revenue uh, for, for your school. And that, that, that's actually the problem that, you know, we are also solving in the edtech space. Um, so before I move forward, uh, I know there are people joining us. We have a lot of audience joining us from different locations in Nigeria. And uh, one of the reasons why we are having this uh, webinar is for us to educate, you know, our school administrators, you know, in different locations on how they can maximize fee, the, the fee collection process. So I would I really like, you know, from your experience, I, I would really like you to help uh, pinpoint the, uh, how do I put it, the importance and challenges of, you know, of leveraging automation. Like what are the reasons why schools you know, schools need to like leverage automation to help, you know, maximize fee collection process. I think for me, I will actually advise other persons to key into it because automation is easy. Actually, it's it's something that you, you do within seconds. You just do it one time, two times, and then it is out. You don't even need to waste much time and going to the bank, doing that coming here and going there so it's actually very easy so i would think other schools should actually key into it the challenges are definitely there are challenges definitely there are challenges but the challenges are very few compared to compared to using uh, the manual one yes actually, the challenges are very very few all right that that's 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 super great so uh let's talk about uh you know um Let's talk about like the future. Like, are there any specific things that you have in mind that you you feel that we can do better to improve that experience? Something that I know you've talked about uh, the process of you know sending reminders when their their, their fees are due. You know, you can easily send messages on staff teams to parents and make sure you know, like you mentioned, like let me use the word, you you're able to disturb parents and make sure that you know uh, they see that depth. Like they have to pay, they have to pay. You know, rather than going the route of you know sending their their words back home, and that has you know significantly helped you know improve your revenue and also being able to have your school data you know all of all of those data making sense on the platform that way you can you can you can project your revenue you understand where you are and you know you know what's outstanding that you know that you know we we do understand that like, is there any other thing that you think that we need to do to improve that experience like any other innovation that you think we need to that we are yet to you know capitalize on that you can share as as an IT expert okay the I think what I would really love is uh, if you can add a module for expenses, it will be very easy. You know, if we have we have revenue generated, right? Yeah. And then we know also look at expenses. We know how much is living whenever expenses are being made. That also can also help. We also check meet the amounts. Okay, this is being minus, this is minus. That means at the end of the term, this is what we are left with. You know, even till now, I still need to sit down and then calculate the expenses by myself. And that manual, this thing is actually very, very tiring. So if we can add that to, to the, the module, it will be very, very helpful to us also. Okay, 
So I, I do understand that. And uh, the good thing is that we have, we also have the product manager in person of Mr. Amit on the call. I'm sure, you know, we, you know, it's also taking it down. And as you know, uh, at Fretis app, we take uh, customers' feedback, very, very important. And because that feedback helps us, you know, to improve how we deliver our services to make sure that, you know, we can guarantee that positive experience and you can get more value from our solution. So this is something, you know, I would also take back uh, internally with the team to ensure that, you know, we review to see how it aligns with our product roadmap and uh, we'll communicate updates once they become available. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Patrick, uh, for engaging with me, uh, engaging with us and our audience. Uh, before we call it a wrap, we would, we, you know, we see we have um, some of our audience, like I mentioned earlier, that are just, you know, uh, hearing about substance for the first time. And I think it's going to be a good opportunity for us to uh, at least show them what, you know, substance can do in terms of the product walkthrough, like a guide to see what it looks like. And uh, maybe, you know, some of the schools can uh, start considering, you know, automating their fee collection process to help maximize, you know, their revenue in this unprecedented time. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, I have with me on the call, Juliet. Juliet will be taking over the session right now with uh, a quick demo as to what, uh, you know, substance can do to help uh, to help uh, schools in this in this time. So Juliet, over to you. Uh, can you hear me? Hi, Juliet. Hi, fine. thank you very much. So, uh... I'll be sharing my screen. So while you're sharing your screen, for those who are just who are, who are joining us from the different socials, if you have questions uh, pertaining to what we've just discussed, please feel free to share on our Q&A section and we will be happy to take your questions right after the presentation. Thank you. Over to you, Juliet. Okay, hi Sonia. I'm um, unable to share my screen. Okay, it looks like we need to give you to give you that privilege. Sonia, on your end, can you grant Juliet that privilege? Um, please can you try now? Okay. Yeah, it's fine now. Can we see my screen? Yes, sure, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. So, um, on Substance, it has um, a dashboard, a centralized dashboard for the director that gives an overview of what you are um going to expect at the end of the term the expected revenue your generated revenue and also your outstanding revenue and it will also give you those um breakdown based on classes you can see Noju one how they have a lot of outstanding the red shows are standing this purple shows paid and all of that so as a director you can view all of this at a glance and also um the entire report of the school the total number of students enrolled total number of staff and all of those so but i'll quickly dive into um showing what um the entire fees from the setup for the fees configuration what it looks like so as um the fits admin, you have the privilege to first of all set um, your account information. And the good thing is you can create account information on, based on different levels. You can create for you know, one different account. You can create different account for primary one and all of those. But if there is just one um, bank account for the entire school, you can make it default so that the entire school will use that same bank account also. Then 
in terms of um, different phase um, item configuration, so you need to add all the items in the that makes up the invoice of the school. So we can have something like tuition, lunch, end of the year party, books, admission fee, and um, some some places we have in different bus routes. So you can have let's say Gaiki one. Um, Gaiki one, two and fro like that. You can have different configuration based on your school needs. And after setting up your item, you can um, add different figure. Like, okay, tuition, let's say tuition for primary one is different from tuition for primary two, is different from tuition for nursery one. So you can have those different uh, aspects of your tuition. So let's assume this uh, invoice is prepared basically for for um, primary two class and so you can see the addition here is 150 you can set your tuition your item type based on compulsory and optional compulsory means the item is um the compulsory for all levels every student is expected to pay such um pay for that particular item and if an item is optional, let's say lunch can be optional. That means a child will want to, a parent will want to add lunch to the child's field. And the good thing is the parent also on their end, they can also, ha they have the privilege of adding and dropping an optional item as the case may be. So, um, so that is that on um, the setting up for, sc for school fees. Then as the fees admin, you have the uh, executive privilege to see the total number of um, students, the, the revenue expected from each student. So, and also um, parents make um, payment from their um, from their end and the school get to reconcile immediately and for parent that goes to the bank to make uh, or sit in their houses to make bank transfer so they don't even have to come to the school also they can um, upload those bank information and the admin and upload the information it gets to the admin the admin can decide whether to approve or reject um, the proof of payment that the parent has sent also. And also the, um, the fees admin have the privilege to see the transaction log. So you can see here we have, um, let's say Hayat's parent have been trying to make payments and you see it's pending. We see how many times they tried, pending, 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 and all of those. Then you can see this um, child also, Raymond, the payment was successful. So at a glance, you can filter by a child's name to, to look at the transaction log. And also for students, you can add, um, for parents that don't want to add the optional item by themselves, as the fees admin, you can click on um, a particular child to add or remove an optional item. So let's assume automatically the system comes with the, diff, uh, with the compulsory item for all students. So that way the fees admin don't have to add the compulsory item, but if there is an optional item, the fees admin can also add it from his or her end, and also the parent can also add it from their end. So um, basically that is um, the setup and how fees are being collected for, for, for schools. And let me quickly show us on the parent side how they are also able to, to manage their own um, payment. So as a parent, let's assume I made um, um, I made a transfer. And instead of sending it um, via WhatsApp to the school, I can upload it here with the bank and evidence of payment. I've said that before, where after submitting this record, it doesn't automatically reconcile the account. The admin would have to um, verify that proof of payment before uh, before approving it. And once he approves it, he automatically reconciles the parent account. Then as a parent, if you have multiple children, you can, on one click, you can make payment for all your children at once instead of paying one after 
one after the other too. So, and also lastly, for parents, you have the privilege to also see your payment history and also your invoice history, just the same way the, the fees admin have the privilege to see the transaction log. So if you made a payment and it was unsuccessful, if you go to your payment history, you will see um, a breakdown of, of it. And you can also have your receipt um, at your convenience instead of coming to the school to get your receipt. Also the payment, after making payments, the system automatically sends you uh, payment receipt via um, email, but you can also come here to print your own payment without going to the school. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Juliet. Um, did you also show up the communication process with parents and school? Do you... Okay. In terms of um, sending payment reminders. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Just give me a second. Okay, so thank you for that, Tiffany. So as a fit admin, you can send payment uh, reminder to the parent, outstanding payments. You can send um, via email, you can send outstanding payment reminder to parent via email. So we already have a custom template. You can see we have a standing um, school fees reminder. That was what uh, Mr. Patrick said, parent didn't like, <laughs> that he was constantly sending them a standing school fees reminder. So you can send your um, parent a standing school fees reminder. You can also send them their invoices. And also, um, for no, this is also for the director. The director can get um, email for next 10 school fees collection and also a reminder to the fees admin also to configure fees for the next 10. Right. Yeah, that answers, yes, sure. That answers your my question. Thank you so much, Juliet, for the great presentation. So just to add a little more before I, I yield the session to Sonia, um, I know some of the questions that might be running to uh, you know, school administra administrators' mind is um, I'm already on an existing solution or I'm already I'm currently using a monitor process. How do I migrate the data that I have or you know, my existing data in, onto systems? So it's something I would just like to touch on. Our onboarding process, our customer onboarding process is very smooth and the experience is very great. We Our data collection process is also very solid. We have a very solid structure in terms of uh, assisting our clients to gather their existing data and also you know, being able to upload that data on our solution. One of the um, value adds for us is uh, our dedicated account, uh, uh, customer success managers that assist our, 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 our new customers coming on board to help show help ensure that that onboarding process is smooth. So from the point of data collection to updating that data on the platform, to configuring the data, the, the system to suit your unique school profile will help with that entire process and make sure that, you know, not just, you know, configuring that system, we also make sure that, you know, we're able to train the different staff that will be utilizing the solution to ensure that they can extract maximum value for, you know, they get value for their money. And beyond that, on the onboarding side, after the onboarding and configuration as, as side of things, you know that with tech, you know, as we mentioned, uh, data transformation is, you know, an ongoing effort. Uh, we also have a very structured support team that helps, you know, ensure that they can respond to queries that you may have, you know, when you, when you struggle to complete a particular task. Like, you know, uh, Mr. Patrick Riley mentioned during the session today, uh, he talked about, you know, his ability to, to reach out to Juliet, you know, when there are issues and they're stocked and Juliet is able to also, you know, assist. And for times when, you know, is beyond business hours. We also have our self-service resources that provides, that gives you more insight like to your frequently asked questions that you can you know, just go through 
and be able to solve your challenge. And then the next day, we are able to also take on, on the issue if you are unable to resolve that particular issue. So all of this and more is what we have currently on SAF Sims to help you know, solve that you know, fee collection process. So thank you so much, everyone, for listening. I'll be handing over to Sonia if there are questions that we can answer before we call it a day. Sonia, thank you. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Thank you so much, Ifani. Thank you so much, Mr. Patrick. I have learned a couple of things. Uh, when I was younger, what they used to do for us back then was to send us back home if you're owing school fees. But now it's not, it, times have changed. The same way we have um, digital adoption in every other thing, there's also now new ways and new measures with which to go about uh, fees collection and also ensuring that we're able to hold parents accountable. From everything that we've said, we've already, we understand that um, schools, I mean, finance is the engine oil of any business, be it a school, a software company, and we always have to find a way to balance it and turn down a couple of things and super, super uh, fantastic entries. We have a question from Instagram, and I will be directing this question at Mr. At Mr. Patrick. Okay, so um, this question, says that uh, how would you recommend how would you recommend that schools balance the um, the need that parents tend to ask sometimes for when I have say I have multiple children how do you balance um, getting parents to pay on time and also requesting discounts and how do you do this so this is a question that we have from Spark. Spark Ellie on Instagram. Mr. Patrick. I think balancing that, what we do, let me use an example for our school. What we do is actually very easy. Discounts, most times we have a general discount for everybody. We go with the promo that if you bring four children, we give you one as a discount. We'll give you, you only pay for, I think those books, a few amount of books. It's not even up to 10% of the school fees. I'm not even sure it's up to 3% of the school fees. It's very little discount. So that's the general discount. And also the, the parents can also meet the proprietors and then request for the discount. So when they do this, we manually go to, SAFSIM has a provision for discount. So we manually just manage the discount there. And when we manage the discount there, it reflects on our page and also reflects on the parent page. So it's actually very easy to manage discount. Discount is one of the simplest things you have you can just manage. Just that if you just know the amount, it's very easy for you to go around it. And also requesting parents to pay. When the discount is placed, the parent, the notification that is sent goes with the discount that has already been placed. So the parent sees the discount and knows how much he is paying for. I think I believe I've done justice to the question. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, just so quickly, um, um, just quickly retreat. So uh, you say you, there's a standard. You have a standard discount um, system where if you have four children, you get a discount on the third um, child. And that is then done on um, SAF scenes. Yes, yes, actually. We have a standard. Now. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, okay, so this, uh, we have um, one more, one more question. And this question is, <laughs> is also around uh, tools. So someone just asked that, how did you go about getting parents? who do not want to, who are stuck in the old ways of wanting to uh, do things the way they are used to? How are you able to convince them to not only uh, adopt this digital uh, transformation, but to also get them to buy phones? This person is very particular about how you were able to push the gospel of Android phones uh, in your school. No, well, that alone has been challenging. You know, mm -hmm. most of what we do, we help them out because you cannot force, you can, I think it is saying that you can bring the camel to the river, but you cannot force the camel to drink the water actually. So we tell them, this is what is very good for you to do. This is what you can do. And then when they cannot reach that, they have an email address, they have their cards with them. 
So we just help them out using our system to make payment of the school fees for them. So we don't actually say it's a must, but most parents actually like it when we discuss with them. We tell you this is the benefit that you will get. It's easy for you to just see your the child's progress on your phone. You just may looking at it, you see the progress of the child on your phone. You see even there is even one graph that I saw recently. There's a graph that shows the progress of your child went up and came down and then it's going up again or is straight and stagnant. So we show them all those things and then we now advise them it's good for you to get phones. Most of them have gone as far as getting phones for their own children because of the CBT that mm. is uh, attached to it. So encouraging them, you speak to them more, get to tell them, okay, this is good for you to do. This is what you are expected to do as part of the academic requirement for your children. Just encourage them more. But if you force them, most of them don't like it when you force them. Just encourage <laughs> them and then they will do it. <laughs> Thank you so much for that insight, uh, Mr. Patrick. Julius, you want to say something? Yes, I would like to add to that. So in terms of um, encouraging parents to use it, like my Mr. Patrick rightly said, it's not compulsory, but he took one initiative like me personally, I appreciated. I wasn't, uh, I'm not a parent in the school, but um, there was a time he was, um, when they introduced the system new to them, parents would come to school, transfer money to him to his account and he will make payments with his card so as to encourage them to do the same thing from the comfort of their houses. To me, that was really, really encouraging for parents. If I'm a parent, I'll definitely go and buy a phone. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you so much, Mr. Patrick. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well done. There's no, uh, where's that emoji to clap? <laughs> thank you so much uh, for that. So uh, just to quickly retreat for the person that asked this question on Instagram. Um, uh, just quickly reiterate the, the, the conversation is that it's not it's like it's rightly said you cannot force anyone to do anything but you can use you know different try to meet them in the middle try to um, let them understand that parents tend to have as parents there's this thing where we, we tend to uh, you know tend to prioritize the uh, their children to themselves so you see them finding you get them buying laptops and phones for their children but they just don't see any reason for why they should uh, also be doing same for themselves. So just trying to let them see what the benefits are, being able to communicate, being able to take, you know, little, little uh, things so they are able to completely change their minds, you know, from getting them to transfer funds to you and then you making the payment yourself to letting them see what the, uh, how it is, in their best interest to be able to you know, do these things. Oh, I just, Mrs. Adekule Timo is here with us. Good afternoon, Ma. Good afternoon, Ma. I love your glasses. Thank you. The length that network has not been uh, the, the oh, best. It has really been so disturbing. All right. Thank you so much okay, for thank you for having me. Consistently trying to join us. We've uh, had a couple of conversations around um, the topic at hand, which is navigating fees collection. With um, Sir Patrick has done a fantastic job, you know, in talking to us. But I would yield the floor now to Ifai to be able to also ask you some questions, and then from your perspective, there's, uh, you know, just to ask, you know, get a different school administrator's perspective on this particular topic that we are talking about. Ifai. All right, thank you, Sonia. Hello, Mrs. Adekunle Tuba. Are you there? Yeah, good afternoon. How are you? I'm very well. So sorry about the experience. Uh, we're happy to have you join us, finally. So I just have one or two questions to ask before we move back, move back to the uh, Q&A question. Are you with me? Yes, I'm with you, but so sorry. Somebody is available to answer those questions. I want, gently wants to attend to something. Thank you. Not, not right. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. What's your name, sir? Are Sorry, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get here, please. Okay. Thank you. 
Are you good? Can you hear us? If you can hear us, please, your mic is mute. So you can click on, on the mute button to speak. We can't hear you if you're speaking. Okay, so I think we can proceed with the questions uh, we are getting from socials while um, he sorts the uh, the earpiece issue. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Okay, so we have one more question. And this question is around, <laughs> it seems like uh, the very, the elephant in the room on this topic is largely centered around managing parents. Um, okay, so this question is around um, how to go about communicating benefits to parents. What are the um, implementable tools? I know Mr. Patrick has already said um, conversations and trying to um, help them to come to see reason. This person is asking about how. So I, I know that um, it appears that conversations are the best ways to do these things, but some people just don't know how, you know, how to get them to see reason. It is one thing for schools to adopt um, these digital uh, tools that are available to us, even with the conversation of even fuel right now, with the prices of petrol, you know, conveying and moving from your house to the bank and then from the bank to the school, for something that you can uh, conveniently do in your house. So this person is asking for tools. Is it that they should make it routine? Should they include it into their school bulletin? Is it that in terms that they can have one-on-one, -on -one, especially for schools that have very large um, parent size? How do you recommend that they go about automating these conversations? Okay, I think, should I answer that? Yes, please. Okay, um, what we do first, the when we introduce it first because we we don't have pta we don't encourage pta because most times you hold pta meetings you spend hours saying things that you don't even want to talk about parents can be very annoying so we don't do pta meetings but what we did is we attached it in the uh, bulletin we have uh, this end of term bulletin that we attach like we call it newsletter so we attached it there and then we send messages on whatsapp also and also a smile and a friendly, friendly face telling them it's okay, it's fine. You know, they have this confidence in their teachers, in their, in their children's teacher, that whatever you tell them, that's what they feel should be done. So when you give them, okay, this friendly smile and then you tell them, don't worry, it's fine. Don't worry, even if whatever happens, I I'll stand in for you. You know, most, time, most of them are scared of, okay, my money will get missing. And I'll just tell them, don't worry, your money cannot get missing. It's as easy like buying Nepal bill. And then when they get to understand that it's as easy as buying Nepal bill or paying for anything online, they get to understand it and then they get to feel fine. And then they are relaxed and then they do it. Hmm. Thank you so much for that, sir. Thank so you. It's just for you to just go around it. Just use available uh, listen. resources thank you so much thank you so much for that sir um so this person uh, is just asking a follow-up question to what we just said the person is asking that um on an average since the implementation of this um, digital tools has there been an increase in the promptness with which parents pay um, fees and how has that generally helped, uh, you know, getting monies and getting monies on time? Yes, they have been actually. They have been. They pay in time when you send the messages before school resumes. You send the okay. messages and then they pay in time. They get to know that they are expected. Most of them just need reminders. So the constant reminders, weekly reminders, bi weekly reminders, get them to pay in time and then revenue is being generated. Thank you so much for that, sir. Um, if there are, we have a participants on the calls, please, if you have any questions, 
kindly um, share in the chat in the chat box. The conversation is still around navigating fees collection uh, for educators and school owners everywhere. Mrs. Patrick has spoken very well on how um, one of the best ways is to drive the adoption of technologies amongst parents. And one of the challenges that they had at first was being able to track their finances. So when you have people that are not, you don't have a centralized channel which you're using to get payments and to get monies, you would uh, find that you are having to do a lot of work with Excel, trying to know which money came in from where, even if somebody has paid, when did they pay? And then just tracking and trace, uh, tracking these uh, finances was a lot of issues. And also not even knowing when to automate and to send reminders. But with digital tools, you are able to give discounts, you are able to um, send reminders, you're also able to encourage parents, you know, to be able to adopt the digital age, you know, get Android phones, get uh, Apple phones, just get phones that you can do these transactions online. And it also helps you as an administrator because you're able to automate WhatsApp messages. You're able to um, send um, notices and updates to your parents and just they, they generally helps the conversation. Uh, so right now we have a question from Happy Enuma and he, this question goes thus, please, how does the digital tools for fees collection work and how do we deploy it for parents who do not even have a smartphone? Okay, um, this is very similar to the questions that we've asked before. So I'll just quickly retake it. And if Mr. Patrick wants to add anything to it, please, he can go ahead and do that. So some of the, um, one of the recommendations that we've gotten one of the recommendations that we've gotten uh, is around being able to communicate with parents, but I would allow um, Juliet to take this question. Juliet, please, can you see this question from Happy? Hi, Sonia. Hi, Juliet. We have a question that says, please, how does the digital tools for fees collection work and how do we deploy it for parents? I believe this person is asking about platforms like SafSims that helps to automate this fees collection and also how do we deploy it for parents who do not even have a smartphone? We've already spoken about how to go about getting parents to have a smartphone, but you can help us take the conversation around um, how the digital tools for fees collection work and how it can be deployed for parents. Okay, thank you. So first, I would like to say every school have their peculiarities when it comes to um, fees, how, how they would like to collect their fees, different um, items and all of that. So the system makes um, provision for that flexibility and whatever it's being configured on the system automatically goes to the parent side. Then also answering the question that says, um, how do they, um, for parent that does not have phone or they are not IT savvy. So um, though in as much as I don't appreciate that, you can generate invoices for, uh, for parents. They'll make payments, you come back, you bring the, the payment, uh, evidence of payment back to the school and the admin will get to reconcile that. So the system also takes care of that too, but it's way too tedious for the school because every parent keep bringing um, bank um, proof of payment and for the admin to constantly reconciling. But if it's being used on uh, online, the system automatically reconciles the account. So, Sonia. Thank you, uh, Juliet. If I you want to say something. I just wanted to expand a little bit on what Juliet said. So, in essence, Juliet is saying that the system has caters for both online and offline payments. Like we mentioned earlier, uh, digital transformation process takes time. So, you might not just I, I know, achieve that 100% adoption. So, that's why, you know, the system provides, uh, you know, uh, room to collect online payments, have school uh, parents who have, you know, who has IT savvy, who can make payments using their cards and you know, go the online route. And then for parents who, uh, you know, uh, you know, they, they are not IT savvy, they can always, you know, go to the bank, make payments, and then the IT personnel can help reconcile that, you know, that uh, particular process. So it caters for both as you, con as you con uh, continuously drive the digital, uh, di digital transformation process you know, at your at your very institution or your school, rather. 
Thank you so much for that, Ifani. Thank you, Juliet. I don't know if uh, your question has been answered. Happy. If not, please feel free to ask um, follow-up questions. Just to quickly reiterate and summarize for people that are just joining us, um, the conversation is still around navigating fees collection and making that efficient, efficient for um, educators and schools everywhere. We've already identified that um, the old system of doing things, while it served us at the time, can no longer efficiently serve us moving forward. You know, there's the challenges of being able to collect fees and collect fees on time, being able to accurately account for the fees that has been collected, being able to give discounts, being able to send reminders, and being able to just generally automate this process. Um, Mr. Patrick has already spoken about the adoption of SAPSIMS in his school and how that has tremendously helped with being able to account for their fees, being able to collect and get their monies on time as well, as well as sending reminders. One of the major ways in which they do this is by driving the adoption of technology, even amongst parents. The schools have adopted the technology. A school is currently on staff sims. They use the fees collection model. They use the parent communication model as well, as well as the other uh, amazing things that you can do on staff sims. And they then drive usage amongst parents to be able to um, to be able to make this uh, to be able to use this particular channel to be able to make payments and to be able to collect um, fees as well. Um, one of the things that they do is to be able to uh, you know try to see get parents to see reason and to be able to uh, you know message and send communication materials to parents as well as that when do one of the best tricks that they use in their school, Kumasi Academy in Yola, is to send and automate reminders even before the school resumes. You know, there's, there's, the, um, there's the saying that money is a spirit. As soon as it comes, it's gone. So when you're able to help parents to plan ahead, once you're able to help parents to, to send them reminders, let them know that, okay, schools are about to resume. This is the amount they are uh, they're expecting to pay. You can split your payment into this number of um, deposits and then you don't even need to come to the school. You don't need to go to the bank. You can conveniently do it from your house, either from your bank account or get a POS person to make the transfer and what have you. And then the process, the system itself is designed to send reminders to parents that are either defaulting or are not, uh, they've not paid their monies in full. So we have a follow-up question from Mr. Happy. I don't know if this is Mr. Happy or Mrs. Forgive me, please. Um, and the question says, is this different from SAF SMS? Juliet. I'll be pushing this question to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, SAF SMS is different from SAF SIM, but they are the same school management software. I like to call it that SAF SIM is Gen Z, while SAF SMS is millennial. <laughs> so that just the uh, only difference. SAF SMS is the old version of um, SAF SIMS. And uh, as it is right now, we are currently migrating all SAF, SIM, all SAF SMS user to SAF SIM. So basically it's the same thing, it's just the name. So let me add to that. So something that Julia didn't touch on is the uh the latest software uh software innovation used in building systems to give uh users a great experience so that's you know that's more on the high side you know when you when you if you are on systems already you can already tell the difference in how the user the look and feel of those of the of the of the platform and how it's very easier to navigate yeah she's still asking sonia Oh, it's a he, it's Mr. Happy. Thank you so much <laughs> for the correction. He mentioned in the chat that it's a Mr. Mr. Happy, thank you so much. Um, like uh, Juliet rightly said, you know, the uh, South SMS is the Oga Pata Pata at the top, you know, is the grandfather of them all. While South Sims is the young, sleek Gen Z, like she said, it's a, it's a lighter software, it's a faster, more easy to use, more easy to adopt platform. It's the, it's, you can call it SAF SMS 5.0, pretty much. It does, um, it's, it's built, it's designed to do everything that, um, you know, SAF SMS does and then more. Uh, for those that are joining us from, uh, from online, um, 
I don't know the difference between SAF SMS and SAF SIM. So SAF SMS is the FlexiServe School Management System, which is our first flagship product. It's the product that a lot of our customers are on at the moment. While SAF SIMs is the young, lighter, smaller, uh, young, lighter, and more easy to use uh, version of SAF SMS. So SAF SIMS is the latest product. Uh, it does what SAF SMS does, but SAF SIMS has been designed and optimized to be able to meet the modern day needs, you know, from having been able to take virtual classes, to being able to automate fees collection, to being able to do CBT um, exams and tests and everything in between. So to answer your question, uh, Mr. Happy, uh, it's slightly, it's, it, they are children of the same mother. That's the best way to answer it. They are, they are children of, of the same, they are, they are kids of the same mother. And very soon, all our SMS customers will migrate to staff sims, but want to make sure that staff sims is strong enough. You know, they say that when a child is small, you serve them, you know, slightly start with milk, you start with golden one, you start with conflict, then the child will get to a point where it will now be taking pounded yam. And fufu and amala, you know, and all those strong, strong food. So right now, we are in the intermediate. Samsung has started taking, you know, semi-solids. But as soon as we get to a point where we know that it is now very solid, we're migrating all our customers to Samsung to see, um, you know, the amazing products that we have on there. Thank you so much, Mr. Happy, for the follow-up questions. Um, so every other person that is on the call, please, if you have questions, do feel free to use um, the chat or the Q&A, uh, the Q&A button on the, uh, on the call. There's a Q&A. Just check at the bottom of your screen, either your laptop or your phone, you'll see a Q&A if you want to send in questions anonymously where you don't want everyone on the chat to see the questions that you want to ask. Please feel free to use the Q&A um, section of of the call okay we have someone's hands raised okay so there's a question from sonia o um sorry i'm late please kindly help with a brief summary of the parts that we've missed okay i'll just quickly do a quick recap of um, everything that we've discussed so far. Uh, like we all know, the topic is navigating fees collection and using that to make and maximize and make the process of collection of finances very easy, uh, make it easier, make it more efficient, and making sure that every account, every cover that comes into the school is accounted for and efficiently being able to track. Um, like every business, like we said earlier, Money is the lifeline of every business, from schools to the hospital to doctors, be it, be it as it may, whatever business that you're doing, this, the conversation of finance and money cannot be overemphasized. It's something that cannot be downplayed. So the conversation is now is how can we help schools make sure that, I mean, we already do so much already as educators. How can we make sure that your monies are collected and collected on time, and you're also be able to adequately account for all the monies that you have. We've been speaking with Mr. Patrick. Mr. Patrick has been with us uh, for a while and he has said a lot on how to go about these things. He mentioned a time in the school where finances were being done manually. You know, you have to, when people pay, you have an Excel sheet where you enter it in and then maybe somebody has already made a payment but you forgot to impute or maybe you imputed and then you mistakenly put one extra zero or you not put one zero and then the entire thing is, the entire thing is a mess. Uh, so what we, what they now did in their own school was to adopt um, the school management system, staff sims, where payment is then automated, where payment is where you can send your invoices to parents from the platform, even before school resumes. Um, usually when I was in school, what they used to do then, once I give you your report card, they'll put the invoice inside the report card. And the problem with fiscal paper is it's you forget. It's, it's just there somewhere. There are many things that come comes uh, along the way and money is a spirit. So once it comes, even before it arrives, it is done. But what platforms like South Sims does is it helps to automate this message. So you don't even have to remember because you as the school administrator or the ICT person or the accounts office or the finance office might be going through, you know, doing their, your own things as well. It's a lot to manually send messages. But with a platform like South Sims, what they did was they automated their messages. So it means that every, maybe once every two weeks, once every three weeks, messages go out to parents to remind them that 
this is the amount for the school fee, so you can split payment. And because it's a software, it's a computer, it can adequately calculate. So if you if your school fees, your children's school fees is hundred thousand, you pay twenty thousand, the platform itself automatically sends a reminder of eighty thousand error. Not and then parents are constantly reminded of how much uh, how much they are owing and how this can be done to help them uh, officially and fast efficiently, uh, you know, make payments. And this has transformed the fees collection uh, in, in his school over there in Yola. I, I hope that that has been able to adequately capture uh, the summary. But if you have any other follow-up questions, please do feel free to ask. Uh, we also have another question from Mr. Moses. It says, what is the cost of onboarding? Is it a one-off or annual subscription package? Um, Juliet, I would yield the floor to you, or uh, if I, one of you could please take this question. Okay, thank you, Sonia. So um, the cost of onboarding, it um, depends on the your school population, your school population. Then also, um, it's not a one-off subscription. It's, an, it's a timely subscription or annual subscription, like you said. So you can decide to pay on a timely basis, uh, or you can pay for a session, let's say 2023, 2024 session, one of that way. So okay. there, there's questions on the group, on the uh, box, the uh, message box. Uh, Nora will be, uh, Nora, Nora just shared her contact details so that you can just call so that you can discuss payment terms. Yes, Nora is our sales executive. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Nora. Thank you so much, Mr. Moses. Um, okay, so I don't know if um, the issues around um, Mrs. Adekunle's network has been resolved. Please, if you can hear us, um, you could please um, turn on your mic or your video so that we can ask uh, you know, some of our questions and just so you can talk to us about what the fees collection journey has been like for your school. You know, the uh, the conversation is most times people tend to have issues, people tend to have, you know, problems, uh, challenges around different things. But when you find out that you're not in this alone, you have other educators, you have other school owners that have been there and they've been able to circumvent these things. It is, it, there's the joy in being able to learn from other people's um, journeys, their challenges, how they solve this practical knowledge. We would really like to hear from you. Uh, okay, your mic is currently off um currently on please can you okay. hear me yes good afternoon hi mrs adipoli good afternoon i'll yield the floor to ifani now so i can ask you some questions and then we'll just move from there okay no problem all right uh welcome back mrs adipoli uh we are good we afternoon, are so Mr. Happy, we are so happy to have you on on today's uh, episode of you know uh money matters so quick one, just as Sonia has rightly mentioned, can you just walk us through like, or just talk to us about how, you know, you moved from the manual fee collection process with your school uh, to, you know, where you are currently. Or but before then, would like you to briefly introduce yourself and talk a little bit more about your school and then you can take a question. Okay. My name is Mrs. Adekunle Motorayo. Um, the name of our school is Ditmo Academy. Is located at Bokun State, Ishashia Kuti, not too far from Lagos State. Um, looking at the school fees, though it has been a big issue in the system because parents tend to delay their children's school fees and they really want the services which is not helping the business at all. Um, now we have actually, uh, what's it called? You know, like most schools, including us, made the children to pay into the bank. And um, I think the way South Sims has come in as well um, is really helping matter because um, you can have your invoice online whereas uh, whereby parents can access it. I think the key thing I need now has been discussed 
already, whereby um, updates have been sent to parents concerning their children's school fees. I took um, that to be very nice. Um, that's my view concerning school fees. All right, thank you so much for sharing, Mr. Adikoli. Uh, so just to quickly take some steps backward. Where, you know, you talked about how you were able to move from uh, the manual process to the automated process. So I know there are some of our audiences, you know, listening to today's session, and they are asking a few questions like, okay, so at what point do I need to uh, implement an automated uh, process to collect fees? So maybe you can talk to us about how and when you decided that it was time for you to leverage an automated process, like a, a solution like SAFSIM to help manage uh, fees collection. Like what was that point? Like where did you get to and said, oh, it's time, we need to like automate the way we do things. Like what, what were the uh, turning points for you? What, what were the major you know, uh, reasons for your move so that others can also learn and you know, that can help in the decision-making process? Firstly, um, the first thing, the first move that was made though, I just joined SAP since last day. And um, the first move that was made was we um, became creating an awareness to parents concerning the platform, concerning the package, um, concerning SAFSIM as a whole, and to be candid, parents really loves it. Yes, and whereas school too, we love it. And one of the major things um, I've been able to do was, what was it called, the CBT exam. We were able to do it last time in Jitma Academy. And um, I think I asked one of your representative that is there no way that um, those that have not faced to face won't be able to access the CBT? And um, I think that's just one of the challenges I have. There is no way. It simply means every child can access the CBT, they pay or not. But I think there was a little adjustment that parents cannot access their children's school fees. I mean, children resolve if the school fees is not balanced. So that's my take on that. All right, thank you so much for sharing. I, I just as we mentioned, we have, you know, Juliet, uh, one of the product expert, and we also have Ms. Amid, who is also the product manager on the call. So we've taken that feedback down and we'll review internally and get back to you with feedback on, you know, ways that we can improve that particular experience. So thank you for sharing. So before I, before I proceed with my question, I'd like to appreciate uh, Mr. Patrick of uh, Kumati Academy for his time. And uh, Mr. Patrick, thank you so much for joining on, uh, joining today in today's session. We appreciate all the insights you've been able to share, particularly as to how your school has been leveraging SAFSIMS to improve and maximize the fee collection process. We greatly appreciate your time. Thank you so much. If you have one or two, you can say before you drop off. Um, Martin, I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to, uh, how should I say, express my experience. It's actually been wonderful. And I hope others too will uh, join also so that we'll have a one big family on South Sea. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Patrick. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Do have a good day. All right. Um, so I was, as we were discussing, uh, Mrs. Ajoke, so um, we've taken down that feedback. I, I just message, sent a message internally. So that would, would definitely refer to you on, on how we can improve that area. So something else that uh, you know, we talked about while you were absent, um, we talked about the experience, like now that you automated um, the fee collection process, like what has that experience been? Because I know that you know, why, when it was, when you know, we all experienced the manual process at least. And we know there are times when schools will say go back home, you haven't paid fees, our parents, the back and forth, the reconciliation process, that all of those trauma on the child's, you know, learning experience and also as well as the parents, you know, experience with your school, that can be very, very it can be, can be negative. So I'm, I'm curious to know how, th how that has improved since you, you know, automated and, you know, signed up on, on staff sims. Maybe you can share more, more light on that. Um, yes, let me say there's an improvement to, 
um, a certain level because parents don't want to experience what they experienced last year. That's okay. My child was unable because on my own part, I told them you cannot access the portal if your child's face is not up to date or if you are defaulting, you cannot access the portal. That was what I did on my own part. Um, to be candid, I think there's an improvement this then in which parents wants to try to cover up that okay, they pay their children's school fees. Though we are still on their neck, you know, the way parents will always be, they are still on their neck, but I think the turnout for this then is a bit better than last time. Great. I, I, that resonates with me. So in, in all of this process, how are you able to like, because of course we all know how things are right now, uh, how the economy is, you know, uh, it's currently, you know, affecting everyone, every businesses. So um, fees might not be paid in full. So I'm curious to yes. know, maybe you can share more insight as to how you're able to leverage um, payment plan to make sure that, you know, you can give um, uh, parents that opportunity to uh, part payment and also follow through on, uh, on the balance, like what has, how has that impacted the entire uh, revenue collection process and also impacted revenue? Uh, for, yes, for yes. Um, you know, we designed a method of collecting the school fees. Some can pay weekly into the school accounts. Some can pay, the school fees can be divided into two or three. They can pay three times or twice into the school account. And those that decides to pay weekly is welcome, and um, which is also helping them, and at the same time helping us as well, rather than them not paying at all. Great, that that makes at least offering that flexibility to school, you know, accommodating, uh, you know, uh, different uh, unique parents' flexibility terms, you know, help, you know, ensure that fees collections, uh, fees are, you know, are, are paid in time. So I think that's that's a a great option to to parents so uh, also something else that we talked about with mr patrick we talked about the challenges with you know digital adoption we also know as a business uh sometimes our customers struggle to adopt our solution and we know that you know for us to be able to drive that change we need to have a proper you know um handhold in making sure that we can onboard train our customers so we are curious to know so now that you have you know um fully implemented substance how are you driving that digital change with parents? Like, are there any specific challenges that you've seen that parents do have? And how have you been able to mitigate those, those challenges, if any? Yeah. I mean, in terms of viewing their fees, using the app from the parents' yes. point of view. Uh, yeah. And so, um, if I should talk about that, uh, let me just first give kudos to Margaret. She's such a wonderful lady calling at any time, any point in time, she's ready to answer you and she respond to her messages as fast as she can. Parents were actually complaining. They couldn't access their children resource. They couldn't do this, they couldn't do that. And trying to help them if we could not as a school. Immediately the challenges or the issues forwarded to your representative that is uh, that is in charge of our school, and person of Margaret, um, quickly she will respond. She even go to extent of you telling them, um, telling you to send their phone numbers. She take her time to call them and um, it's sorted. Uh, I think the only issue and which I really want to be most flexible is for parents to be able to join the SAFSIM um, platform should be able to register themselves and their children in which we are doing. And um, they should be able to access their children's results. I really want it to be more flexible because it gave us an issue. But the issue is not really an issue because um, your representative is doing a wonderful job. She's doing a good job because she's attending to the issue seriously. Thank you for that wonderful feedback. Um, so to comment first on the feedback regarding, uh, you know, ensuring that parents, we are able to collect the parents' data and have it on staff. So it's an ongoing effort, which we are also working hand in hand with the schools to make sure that, you know, we can have, because 
Um, IT is more like garbage in, garbage out. Just what you put into the system that the system will be able to give to you, no matter how beautiful that platform is or no matter how innovative that platform is. And it's something that we also, as a brand, would recognize. And, you know, we are doing our best to make sure that we can partner with our clients and make sure, you know, uh, that process is, is seamless. And for those who are not yet our client, prospective customers who are, you know, listening in, Margaret is one of the uh, our customer success uh, representative at Flexesa. Margaret is uh, more like the dedicated account manager to uh, uh, Mrs. D uh, Mrs. Adekunle uh, uh in terms of you know managing that end-to-end -end process, adoption, onboarding, training, and that support. So one of the things that one of the value adds of you know uh, sign up on substance, like I mentioned earlier. Is that when you sign up on substance, you know, you're not left hanging uh, from the process of you know onboarding to training, you have someone dedicated to making sure that you know you can completely configure your platform, you understand how to use it from the different user perspective. And you know, not just that, going as far as you know, as she rightly mentioned, making sure that your own customers, uh, that means the parents are able to use the platform successfully and make sure that that, that digital transformation process does not end with just we and the client, but as well as our client and their own customer. So it goes way beyond. So, and that's, you know, what that's more like our definition of, you know, going the extra mile for our customers. And that's what you'd, you stand to benefit when you sign up on SAFSIMS. Thank you so much, me, uh, Mr. Jockey, for, you know, sharing that insight. Uh, my last question. Um, so in terms of um, recommendation, I know you've mentioned uh, quite a few. Are there any specific, specific things that you think that we need to do to improve the fee collection process currently on SAF Sims? Yes. Um, yes. Um, thank you so much. I, I want to see you. SAF Sims, you are wonderful. Yes, you are wonderful. And um, I don't know, maybe this will go out to many because personally, I'm advertising SAF Sims. I'm telling other schools it's a platform they can use and they won't regret it. Uh, when it comes to the school fees issue, um, the, uh, the main thing I've said earlier is that when parents realize that their children cannot sit for an exam concerning the school fees now, if they realize that their children cannot sit for an examination, it prompts them to pay early than um, being delayed, than them delaying the children's school fees. So they will, um, they will have to at least put in more effort in order for them to pay early. But if there is nothing um, to, to um, there, there is nothing to, to delay or there is no, there's no, what's it called? Let me say there's nothing in place for them to feel the heat that's okay if I didn't pay, my child will not write an exam. They won't really want to pay. <laughs> if you send them home like we do before, they will come to you, plead with you, do this, do that, which is not really working. I think the best thing and the best system that should still be put in place is that, well, like my school that really adopts Tarsim's um, computer-based test, which is CBT exam. Um, the child should not be able to access the CBT or the child should be locked out if the child cannot write the examination. Because oh. um, like my school, we do two types of examination. We do the theory part, which is handwritten. And we also do the CBT part, which is the objective. And um, it's very nice. I think that's what the only thing I'm requesting from Substance. Substance right. has been so wonderful. I love the platform. It's nice. All right. Thank you so much, Ma, for sharing that feedback. Uh, if I understand correctly, you want us to be able to uh, restrict or restrict the privileges. Yes, for, restrict. Uh, yes. Not a problem. We have taken down that feedback and we'll definitely get back to you on, you know, as we get updates. Uh, if if uh, any comes up, thank you so much. I think those are the, all my questions for now. Um, I will give it over to Sonia. I I want to believe that there are questions from our audience. Sonia, 
Uh, thank you so much, Ifai. Um, our camera was off, but I was smiling from ear to ear. It's one thing for the team to be working tirelessly behind the scenes, and it's another thing to hear the amazing feedback from Zadi Pelletimo. Thank you so much for the kind words. It was very, um, very nice to hear. Okay, so we have um, a couple of questions, and I will quickly run through them. Just a quick reminder, please, if you have a question, recommendation, comments, feedback, anything whatsoever, please feel free to use the Q&A um, option on the on your chat, on your device, the device you're joining us from, be it your phone, your laptop, uh, or your iPad, or your um, tablets. Uh, there's a, just underneath, uh, you'd see um, Q&A. You can send in your questions there if you are looking for you know, anonymity, or you could just simply use the chat option to send in your question. Okay, so this question says, is it, is it now that um, SAFSIMS is now the go-to, you know, between the parent and the bank? And what will be the charge per student slash per pupil for this service? Okay, so the quick um, uh, one-way answer to this is kind of like um, us being a payment gateway. Uh, so a lot of us are currently uh, we are now used to, you know, buying things online, either from Facebook, from Instagram, or even when you make transfers, for example, even at the shop, when you're at the shop, you want to pay for something. So what we've provided is a payment gateway. So this payment gateway is directly linked, um, you know, to your account. So what happens is on um, depending on the kind of um, payment arrangements that you have for the school. So there are some um, schools that are currently on a per student payment model. So that means that of every school fees that is paid, uh, you pay a certain amount to SAFSIMS. That's one payment arrangement. Another payment arrangement is subscription based. Uh, Gillette said this earlier, uh, based on an amount that is agreed upon. We have um, four different tiers of payment. We have one based on the school size and how many models you're using on SAFSIMS. Then there's another one also uh, based on like different payment categories that you have. So it's it's all very flexible and it's based on conversations. So what I'll do is I will share uh, the contact of one of our key account managers, uh, Mrs. Nara Ajayi, and she would be in touch to answer any other um, direct questions that you have with respect to payment and adoption and coming on to serve sims. I don't know if this answers your question. If it doesn't, kindly let me know so that we can um, so that we can be able to, you know, address that uh, question as well. Okay, yeah. So I have one question for Mrs. Adekunle. Uh, this person is asking that how outside of um, the school uh, that. Uh, this more academy now. Outside of this more academy, um, adopting SAF sims. How has the adoption been like on the end, on the parent side? How has um, been as the parents been able to receive um, the platform, and how have you gone about that in your own school? Hmm. Well, for parents to receive the platform is a bit tedious, maybe because of the environment. Uh, but you know, anything that is new to people, they tend to um, they tend to be rigid at it. But with time, and um, we being able to educate them, um, I think um, they are really adapting to the substance. Uh, what's it called? Platform. Okay, thank you so much, Ma, uh, for that. Um, I would also like to just confirm um, what has, what in your own experience would you say is the, this is a follow-up question from me now, uh, is the biggest challenge that you faced so far and how are you tackling it? Well, I've, like I answered if I, earlier, it's just that parents complain. Oh, I'm not able to assess my child results. I'm not able to um, join the platform as a parent. I'm not able to do this. And which I have answered that um, your representative, Margaret, has done a good job. Let me just give staff some kudos. Um, your staffs are well-trained. 
So she has done a good job in tackling that. And um, when we are having issues like that, and it's being forwarded to, for, um, to Margaret, your representative, or she, she, she finds solution to it, especially if we cannot undo it, or we are too busy to undo it. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, question. Um, so please, if uh, we, are there any follow-up questions for Mrs. Adekule, Ifai, Juliet, or myself? We're currently all out of questions. Um, in the absence of any other questions, um, I think that we can call it a day. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, any last words, uh, Mrs. Adekule? Hey, yes, thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Ifai. And um, I don't know the third person that is there. And a big thanks to, to Margaret. Um, you people are so wonderful. And um, I pray that Sarsim will grow wider um, by his grace. And um, I won't stop advertising Sarsim to neighboring schools because it's a good platform to be on. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Thank you so, so much, Ma. Thank you so much for your kind words. Thank you for choosing to be an advocate of substance and FlexiSav. Um, if I, Juliet, any last words, please. So I, I feel I feel so excited, you know, getting very positive feedback from our customers. You know, it makes, it, it kind of motivates the team and, you know, to continue to do more, to make sure that our customers are getting that maximum satisfaction. So I, we want to, Use this opportunity to uh, Mr. Dekunle for that feedback. We will continue to deliver great service to our customers. And for those who are just, you know, uh, hearing, uh, hearing about SaaS for the first time, um, our customer experience is top notch. I think that's one of the things that you know, uh, lots of our customers always talk about. So if you are if you are considering, you know, making the choice, please do take the advantage and select SaaS as your go-to school management platform. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, fine. Juliet? Thank you, everyone, for joining. So I'd like to say we we'll hope to see more of um, webinar like this moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juliet. It's been an amazing time. Thank you for spending the last almost two hours with us. We're super grateful. And we promise that we'll be having more conversations like this around issues that um, educators are having and how they can optimize their processes. Because outside of just automating and making your lives easier, we'd also like to have conversations around challenges that you have as educators. So please feel free to send us either a DM on Instagram, on Twitter, Facebook, or even via our website on any topic at all that you'd like for us to discuss. Us. And on that note, it's thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. From myself, Ifai, Juliet, Mrs. Adekole, and Mr. Patrick in absentia. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you. And until next time, it's been SAP Series, a flex Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.